What's the connection between mitochondria and the microbiome? Great question from Dr. David Perlmutter on the Functional Forum. Well, my interest, of course, has been the brain and what goes on within the brain. And as I've spoken uh, at this uh, meeting over the years, um, and most of the time here in this actual, at this hotel, uh, I'm talking about energetics of the brain and free radical mediated pathology and how flaws of mitochondrial function ultimately lead to apoptosis or pre-programmed cell death. The brain is a highly energetic, energy demanding organism utilizing 25% of our calories at rest while it only represents 5% of our total body weight. When we look at that, we think mitochondria. And we, we think about this relationship that we have with these mitochondria and understand that mitochondria were very likely bacteria that took up residence in what would then be eukaryotic cells. I mean, this is a mitochondrion, but looks for all the world like a bacterium, doesn't it? Uh, Dr. Lynn Margulis talked about this way back in 1968, looking at mitochondria, looking at their circular DNA, which is like bacterial DNA. And, uh, you know, this is another relationship than we have if you consider mitochondria to have a microbial origin, then this is yet another player in the realm of our relationship, in the understanding of our relationship with microorganisms. Then we can look at the cosmos. We went to the uh, planetarium. You should really go to the Museum of Natural History here uh, yesterday, and, and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson narrates this incredible tour through the, through the cosmos. But, you know, it's, it's true that we think of this incredible amount of information in the universe. And yet, as uh, Julian Davis talks about, once the diversity of the microbial world is cataloged, it will make astronomy look like a pitiful science. I mean, that's a kind of a, a harsh uh, assessment. But the amount of information within the microbiome is incredibly, incredibly vast. These bacteria, you know, outnumber our, our own body cells by a factor of 10 to 1, but the microbes in and of themselves represent a vast repository of information. And, you know, recently that statistic of that the bacteria outnumber our own cells 10 to 1 was challenged. Somebody wrote something in it, so, of course, my email box got filled. Okay, there are 10 times as many phage particles as there are bacteria, so I can, I can regain my composure here and recognize, if you look at the microbes in general, that there are a lot of them. But let's talk about these mitochondria for just a moment. Again, very much looking like bacteria, and when we, this really spans then the spectrum. Looking at the cosmos and the vastness of the universe and the very smallest of organisms within our bodies, the phages, and of course, uh, looking at the microbiome. So, as I mentioned, Dr. Lynn Margulis, who in 1968 published this notion, she tried to publish it, and she was rejected 14 times by peer-reviewed journals. And finally, uh, Journal of Theoretical Biology decided it would publish it, take a chance, and they were right. But this notion that the mito mitochondria were once free-living organisms that took up residence within our cells, I mean, it was thought to be basically heretical uh, that someone would conceive of such a notion. Thanks so much for watching, and for more great clips like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've created a special free video just for you. It's called The Five Steps to Becoming a Leader in Your Wellness Community, and it'll give you some of the starting points on how to position yourself as the leader in your zip code of your health community. All you have to do is click on the link below.